I don't know about you, but I am getting very, very excited for the year. It's partially because Chelsea are rubbish at the minute and I want the season to end, too, but mostly I just love international football. I love a tournament. You know, the sun's normally out. We're in the beer gardens. Everyone's getting behind England. It's always a fun time. So to get in the spirit, I thought in today's video it would be a good time to take a look at all of England's home shirts and rank them. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. So excited, in fact, I've got World in Motion. I'm repeating the background there. So, you know, you're welcome. <laughs> but let's look at the tiers. At the bottom, we've got Shite for all the worst kits. Just above that, we've got Not Great. In the middle, we've got Average for a nice basic tier. Uh, just above that, we've got On the Plane. You know, all the players that are on the plane. Uh, but they're not quite the best because the best category is It's Coming home it makes sense in my head i hope it does in yours too but let's jump straight into it right we're starting in the 80s we're not really going to go all the way back because obviously before then you know kits were just very basic just the color of the shirt that sort of thing uh so we're starting in the 80s where shirt design started to really you know become more of a thing and we're looking at this 80 82 admiral shirt and now admiral's a classic it really is a classic you know these old school england shirts really are very nostalgic for many people the panels on the top the blue and the red really nice I think this is on the plane. It's just, it's too much of a classic not to be in there. We then moved to 1986, the first Umbro shirt, and this is a big stint for Umbro at uh, England. Uh, I really like Umbro, but this one is, it's, it's okay. I think, you know, it's a very classic Umbro 80s shirt, you know, with the nice kind of like colors things, but it, it just doesn't do much for me. I, I, I'm, I'm going to put this one in average. I just don't think it's insane. And I think the same goes for the next one, the 1988. This is, again, a nice shirt. I really like the diamond pattern on the base of this one. But it's that collar for me. The collar just isn't doing it for me. I'm not really the f a fan of a buttoned-up collar that's not a polo, obviously, like the one I'm wearing. So, yeah, it's a nice kit. I'm going to put it in average. But now we're moving to truly one of the goats, one of the best England kits ever. It's the 1999 home shirt. Of course it is. This is... It might be the best. I think it might actually be the best, in my opinion. I love this shirt so much. Anytime I got the opportunity to wear it whilst working at Retro Football Kits, I had to take it. I was always in this kit. There's a lovely diamond pattern on the base that really is just funky and very 90s. But then the sleeves, you know, having that nice umbro taping on the sleeves, the polo color with the lines. Oh, my God. Even the numbering on this, the bold red numbering. And, of course, 1990 was an iconic tournament as well for England. So everything comes together on this one. This is it's coming home. It's one of the best, man. We had that for a few seasons until 1994 where we had this new shirt and... We actually didn't go to 94 World Cup, of course. It was a, a bad time for England that year, not going to the World Cup. Uh, huge, really. So this shirt doesn't really get the love that it might deserve because it doesn't have a tournament behind it. But that being said, I like it. I think it's really cool. It's a very classy Umbro 90s, like mid-90s shirt. I love the fact that it's got that little Lingen logo in the parlor. That's pretty cool. Again, nice badges and stuff. It's not quite GOAT, but it's on the plane for sure. And then we're talking about one of the most iconic tournaments in England history. We're talking about 1996, of course. The home shirt for this is so simple, but so beautiful. It's just brilliant. So they've got they went for centralised badges on this one, which is you know makes it stand out above the rest. That colour, oh my god, that colour, the dark blue with the light blue. The light blue is such an iconic colour from this tournament. The letters and numbers as well, having that nice light blue outline. And of course, just an iconic tournament. It being in England, Gaza's goal against Scotland, all the drama before it, everything, you know, obviously losing to Germany, of course. But this unreal shirt, you know, unreal shirt, unreal tournament, one of the best fit England. This is, of course, going in. It's coming home. And up next, 1998, another shirt for me that I just absolutely adore for England. This is beautiful. I think, again, centralised badges looks really cool here. We've added some panels. We've gone away from the blue and brought back the red, which is, a, you know, still a very England colour. There's loads of little details as well, like the little England flag in the polo. Love that. Love the fact that the polo button has a little England badge. The panels look really nice. Again, a centralised badge, just polos. All the stuff that ticks the boxes for me. I'm, a, I'm, I'm very much have a 90s style that I really lean towards, and this is one of them. So for me, again, it's coming home. In 2000, we had this shirt, and to be honest, this is one of the shirts that I don't see too much of for England. But I think it, again, it's really cool. I like it's, it's very, very simple. I think sometimes England shirts can be simple, but that's okay. This, the, the colours on this look really nice. There's some nice piping on the inside. 
yeah, you can't really go wrong. I don't think it's up there with the best bits on the plane. In 2002, another big World Cup. Uh, this sh this team, for one, oh my God, this team is insane. Uh, obviously, golden generation that didn't win anything. Blah, blah, blah. Same old England story. <laughs> Why am I getting excited for the Euros? No, it's fine. We're, we're, it's fine. We're, we're doing something this year. Why am I saying this? Anyway, this kit is actually quite nice it's that definitely early 2000s vibe with the with the piping being like outlined nice red stripe down behind the england badge that gives this kit just that little bit of personality i can't fault it too much again not goat status but it is on the plane for sure and then in 2014 England bring out this one this one it for me this one reminds me of my childhood i was born in 97 so obviously you don't really remember like the 98 world cup or anything like that but 04 that's where i'm starting to remember things and this one yeah this one really does give me some nostalgia uh, so that might help it out a little bit here because is it a great shirt i don't know i think it is i, think, I like again centralized badges polo collar it's it's kind of harping back to the 98 shirt really in its own weird way uh but i think this shirt i don't know it's a little bit Brexit, but I, like <laughs> but I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I think I'm a sucker for a polo, aren't I? I just should say it. I'm a sucker for a polo. Listen, it's on the plane. I like it. Moving to 2006, the Germany World Cup. I remember really, really getting into this World Cup. One of the first ones I truly remember. Uh, unfortunately, the kit was was not there for me. It has obviously the St. George's Cross on the one shoulder. It has a little red accent on the other, but that's about it. It, it's it's a bit basic, but I think, I don't know, I just don't really like this design, like the spiky St. George's Cross. I'm not sure. Uh, this is going in not great for me. And then it just gets worse in 2008 because they kind of take the same style vibe and add more to it, but it, oh, it just doesn't, I don't know. The lines coming across the shirt, I don't hate the lines, but they're a bit like meaningless. The fact that the Umbro is just starting to drift off up away from the badge, so it's like starting to not be centered. I hate kits when they do that it just never looks great and then that under panel with the design and it just giving it more of more of an eyesore uh yeah i'm not a fan of this one this is going in shy it's our first shy in 2010 they stripped back everything on bro they were like no all right back to the basics they brought out the tailored by umbra range now if you've ever worn one of them you know how soft they are this is really it really reminds me of you know being a kid having i think i had this shirt just nice and soft and feels nice um but that being said the design of it is literally just a white polo with the england badge and umbro so i can't put it any higher than average but i do it's all right it's nice and when you're talking about england kits at the minute obviously there was the big news about the england cross being changed the colors are on it oh my god i can't believe it yeah shut up it's ridiculous and it actually happened before it happened in 2011 when uh, peter savile an iconic designer british designer Designed this England kit, and what he did was he took loads of St George's crosses, changed the colour, put on the kit. There was no outrage then, was there? There wasn't. I don't remember it at least. This is an okay kit. I just thought I'd have to <laughs> had to say that. But it, this is an okay kit. It's nice. I, like the 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 cross design is cool. I might have preferred it across the whole kit, maybe. Uh, but other than that, it's again a pretty average shirt. But <laughs> and now we have Umbro's last ever England shirt for now. Hopefully Umbro come back. Please come back. But. They ended on a sour note, I can't lie. This shirt is just, ugh. 2012, just red accents. The polo, no, it's not even a polo, is it? Like a Henley collar, looks terrible. Ugh. There, they, they fumbled the bag on this one. This is shite. And then we moved to 2013 when Nike came in for England. Uh, pro, pro, bit of a big story, to be fair. Moving away from a British company for the first time ever with Nike being American. But this shirt, they, they were harping back for 150th anniversary of the England national football team. So they had a nice little uh, banner underneath the badge. Just a simple round neck. I think they were trying to keep it simple, keep it like retro looking. Again, it's, it's not doing too much, but it's okay. So I'll throw it in average. The following year, 2014, uh, this is, I don't know about this one. So it's a very average shirt. The collar's all right. It's got like a V-neck kind of chunky collar, but the, the sleeves are shiny. So if you see this shirt up close, like they've got this weird like shiny material on the, on the top of the sleeve. And I just didn't like that at the time. But then again, it's not it's not insanely bad. So I'll throw this one on average as well. 2016, a low for England. A very, very low for England. On the pitch, of course, getting beat by Iceland. But also off the pitch because this kit isn't great. I just, I never fell in love with this England kit. It's, I think obviously what happened on the pitch doesn't help. Um, it never, it definitely doesn't help. But I don't know, it just the two panels, it seemed pretty basic. It just seemed like a training kit, to be honest. I never really just 
gravitated towards this one. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to throw this one in not great. It's not ugly, so I'm not going to put it in a shite, but it, yeah, it's not great. And then we moved to 2018. Oh my God, 2018. Oh, if I could go back, I would. It was such a beautiful time. I, it, this tournament is what I'm on about. This this summer is what I'm on about at the start of the video where I talk about how great England international tournaments are because this exactly it, what it was. It was beer gardens, sun was out, Southgate's boys, we were behind them, we were doing well, we got to the semi-finals. I was actually in Croatia in the, for the semi-final, which was just so not fun. <laughs> it ended on a sour note for me. So all that being said, the kit itself is pretty boring, isn't it? It's just a white shirt with a red accent. That's it. But and I, to be fair, when I think about this tournament, I think more about the red shirt, you know, the away one. Um, so there's not too many memories in it. But because of how beautiful that tournament was, because of how basic the shirt is, I'm going to put it in average. Keep it simple. And then we go to 2020, another beautiful summer. Oh, my God, another beautiful one. Well, it wasn't 2020, was it? It was 21. But this shirt is 2020, obviously COVID and all that. But this shirt I actually thought was pretty cool at the time. I thought... Uh, I actually really, really rated it. I think when I did the top five England video, I think I threw it in there, which is probably pretty bold, but I do really like it. I think it's cool. Centralised badges again. I think at the time, Nike were doing this nice zigzag thing down the side with that um, with the same kind of pattern that's in the neck, which is really cool. Uh, nice round neck collar, really basic, but yeah, pretty good. I think it was really, really nice. It really suited England, and I think off the back of having a few boring ones, it was nice to just have a tiny bit of spice. So I'm going to put this one on the plane. Then 2022 rolls around and Nike really just, uh, <laughs> I if you ever watched the retro channel, you know how much I hated this Nike template because I just, the semicircle thing really, really jarring for me. I think I mentioned it so much on that channel. So I'm, I've got to mention it now, of course. Um, but they were obviously harping back to the 96, which um, was cool. And I respected that because that's such an iconic kit. And like the, the, the light blue color, I love it. It just works on an England kit. It's um, it's very very nice, but to do it in that fashion with this horrible gradient, like oh no, it's just they could have just done a round neck collar with the same pattern in the in the cuffs, and you probably were into a winner. But that gradient on the top, no 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 no. I was gonna put this in not great, but I think I'm gonna throw it in shite. I really really hated this. And that brings us to today, the 2024 England shirt uh, with the cross on the back. This kit. Is so close to being amazing, isn't it? This kit is so good. It's obviously going for the retro vibe. Uh, so the, the the white is kind of like a nice, like not not pure white. You've got nice red and blue accents, proper England, almost kind of like Admiral-ish. And it's got a polo color, which is very retro as well. But the polo color that Nike rolled out for this next season's kits are so bad. They're not even... So this is a polo color. And they're, they're like, if you kind of just only, I can't even do it. I can't even do it. This one, that's how good this polo is. It's just like a half fold. Like a, just as if they folded it a little bit. Why? Makes no sense. I know you've got to innovate. You've got to try and do different things. But this just doesn't land. So, yeah, for me, this kit is so close to being almost, it's coming home almost on the plane. But it's actually dropped so low. I was thinking of putting an average, but. I, it's not average, is it? Because it's got annoying features, so I'm going to put it in now. I hate it. <laughs> so that's it. That's the England shirts rank. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there should be any higher or lower. To be honest, you could probably do this. I'll do this again in a week and have different ones, you know, just but that's just how I'm feeling at the moment. Do let me know in the comments below what you think, though. What's your favourite England shirt? Get it all in the comments below. I do appreciate the love on the channel. If this video does well, by the way, why not? I'll do an away shirt video because I enjoy doing these like ranking all all shirts videos. So, you know, with the tournament coming up, we'll do an away one if this one does well. So make sure you like, make sure you comment. Let me know if you want to see that. But that's it. I'll stop rambling there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to watch <laughs> World in Motion for a few more hours. See you in a bit. <laughs> You've got to hold and give to do it at the right time.